quiet. Um, <laughs> I'd like to welcome you all to Guerneville Bible Church. My name is Lenny Trujillo, and uh, I enjoy coming out here pretty much once a month. So I'm uh, just going to be sharing some songs with us. Why don't we all stand together and sing this classic uh, hymn, In Christ Alone. Thank you, Lenny and, and Richard, for uh, leading us today. Um, it's once a month that Faye and Randy can't be here, and Lenny has, has filled in so many times. And actually, I think I have you booked up through August, right? Uh, further. <laughs> further, okay, yeah. So further than that, we've, I've got them booked up. So 
Uh, he's gonna. He's uh, him and, and Roxanne are. They're part of our family now, and so uh, we're happy you guys are here. Uh, well, we just have a, a couple of announcements. Well, a couple announcements on the slide. I got a couple announcements that I didn't get on there. Uh, but first of all, if you you uh, those cards in front of you and the chairs in front of you, we use those for some some very specific things. One, if you're a first time visitor, we want you to fill that out and. Um, and uh, you can uh, give that to us, and in exchange for that, you get a little goodie bag. Um, and if you're a, a, a member or a, a visitor that's been here before, you don't get another bag. Um, but uh, you can use those to communicate with me, and you can put those in the offering plate af uh, at the end of the service, hand them to me after the service, um, whatever works for you. Use those for prayer requests that uh, you're too chicken, I mean, you're too... Uh, <laughs> You don't feel like getting up in front of everybody and sharing, um, or uh, if you've made a decision during the service sometime that you want me to look, uh, to be praying about, uh, use them for those things as well. And then, in uh, two weeks from tomorrow, we are going to host uh, the what they call Entertaining Angels. It's the nomadic shelter from the Redwood Gospel Mission. We are going to be hosting them overnight. Um, and so uh, it is, uh, we've been talking about, we've built ourselves up spiritually for a while and, and we want to take steps out. This is one of our, our first steps of, of going out and ministering. Uh, so they're going to come here. Um, we're going to feed them dinner. Uh, we hang out for a little bit. We're going to play some games. I'll share a short uh, devotional. Uh, and then we leave and the gospel mission takes care of them the rest of the night. Um, we've got somebody that's going to come and, and lock up for us at 6 the next morning when they leave, but we're also preparing um, lunch bags for them because they get uh, dinner with us and they'll get breakfast the next morning, but they don't um, have lunch. So we're going to make them some lunch bags to take with them. Uh, so saying all that, if that sounds like something you might want to be involved in, check with me or check with uh, Vicki uh, after the service or sometime this week. Um, Vicki's going to be preparing uh, enchiladas. Um, for for them uh, and the and the bags. Um, so if they say one of the most important things is not so much the food or anything else that you do the the program. The most important thing is just sitting and eating with them and talking to them, letting you know getting to know them uh, because for a lot of them and we don't know until a couple of days before, but there may be complete families with children as well as adults. Um, so if you want to be a uh, part of that, uh, let us know, and um, we, uh, we will gladly accept your help. If you're going to come and stay for dinner, I need to know. Yeah, she just makes got to make enough enchiladas for everybody. So everybody just tell her that you're coming, and then if you can't make it, it's okay. I get enchiladas when I go home. So... Um, I have a, do have a couple announcements that I don't have slides for. One in uh, three weeks, um, we have our potluck. Is it three, three weeks? Yeah. Three weeks from today, we have our uh, next potluck. It's called Spring Fling. Um, we have a sign up sheet back there in the back. Um, so you're more than uh, welcome to sign up to bring something. Um, it's not mandatory, um, but uh, if you want to contribute, uh, sign up to bring something uh, in, in three weeks. That gives you three weeks to. To get it together. Um, so anyway, there's the sign-up sheet. And then the last one, I can't remember what the last one was. Casadero. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Today at three o'clock, uh, we've been invited up to Casadero Baptist Ch uh, Church Camp, Casadero Baptist Camp, um, to participate. They're doing a church sing, and they're inviting a, a, a bunch of local churches to come up there and have a good time, worship God together as a, a community of believers. Um, and so if you are interested in going to that, um, it starts at 3 o'clock, Casadero Baptist Church um, Camp. Okay, go by what I mean, not by, by what I say. All right. Um, so Casadero Baptist Camp, um, and you can Google the address up there. Um, there. I don't know how many churches are coming, but it should be, uh, should be a good time. Vicki and I are planning to go, and I know several others of you have said that you're interested in going as well. Um, but uh, if you want to join us, I know it's short notice. Um, the camp director, Paul, just uh, texted me earlier this week on Tuesday or Wednesday and 
and said, oh, by the way, uh, but that's the way, Paul and I go way, way back, and that's kind of the way that we do things. We do last minute things like that all the time. So he, for him, Wednesday was on time um, for Sunday. So, um, but if you want to join us, um, it'll, be, it'll be a good time. I believe that's all of them now, right? All right, let me read our scripture today. We're still in Psalms 119. It's a long psalm. Uh, we're going to be looking at verses 129 through um, 136 today. Your testimonies are wonderful, They're my, therefore my soul observes them. The unfolding of your words give light. It helps, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth wide and pan, panted, for I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me after your manner with those who love your name. Establish my footsteps in your word and do not let any iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man that I might keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of water because they do not keep your law. Let's pray this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us scripture to encourage us, to correct us, to reprimand us, to help us grow, to be more like our Savior. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we thank you for this scripture here that you've given us this morning. And as we begin our service this morning, Lord, we just want to, uh, to be focused around you this morning. We want every word that we say, every, every thought that enters our head to be about, about Jesus and his sacrifice for us and your great love for us. So, Lord, as we begin our service, we just want to praise you and worship you with everything that we are. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. So, we have a special treat. Uh, Sue is feeling well enough to come and, and lead us in our prayer time this morning. All right. I think that could use a little. Yay. Yay. <laughs> oh. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here in the strength of Christ I stand. <laughs> yeah. It's his strength. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, that's one thing I've learned in this journey so far is that um, I can only stand in the strength of the Lord. And he gives me the ability to do the task I need to do. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. Um, anybody have prayer requests? There's a race. <laughs> I have kind of a, a praise and a um, prayer request. I have a great nephew, little Mikey, who's had a lot of trouble learning to read and retain, and um, he's uh, going into second grade now. And um, they think now they've made a diagnosis that uh, he actually had a sinus problem that was keeping him awake, like a, a little young boy with the problems that we w that we solved with CPAPs. And so they did a, um, a really successful operation on him last week. Mm -hmm. And um, I just pray that that solves his learning problems. Mm -hmm. Mikey. Sue, I would bring prayer this morning for all of us in this congregation that have aging parents that they are witnessing their decline and the sadness of what sin has caused uh, that we have to have this happen in our lives. Hi, thanks for your prayers, everyone. Um, my brother has a mother-in-law who lives in Texas, is being taken care of by um, her son, who doesn't want to go through the dying process with her and wants to just walk away. So his wife is going to Texas to try to figure out how to get all this complicated medical care, switched over to Florida, and um, he's under stress. His wife is under stress. She may have to quit her job to do this, and they, they need her job. And, um, and of course, the mother-in-law is most likely in the dying process. So she needs comfort and the hand of God and peace and um, anything that we can think of 
um, physical comfort as well and ease uh, for her uh, daughter to just, for it to just go miraculously well. Just let God pick them all up and carry them over this, over this crisis and set them down on the other side as if they didn't even go through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. I'm doing this out of obedience. Um, I wanted to praise God for his word. Uh, today, the verse that I got was um, Isaiah 54, 17. And I wasn't feeling good at all. And I wasn't thinking that, well, maybe I'll stay home. But then I read this, and it says, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. And that was the word for today, and I knew that it was for me to get your butt out of bed and go. <laughs> but, um, and I'd also like to pray for um, our niece, Donna. She has done so much for us in our life, Scott and myself. And now her dog ha has cancer in its shoulder, and it might have even gone to the, to the chest. And she, they're really seriously thinking about amputation, chemotherapy and all this stuff and I just pray that you know God puts a hand on that dog and heals it and then they'll know they'll know that Jesus can do anything so that's my prayer for Donna and also peace for her they're having all kinds of problems with their marriage and stuff so okay thank you okay, anyone else I want to pray for Doug because he um, he's having to take up a lot of slack of things that I used to do that I can't do right now. And the big one is yard work. And we have a yard turning into a jungle. And uh, he gets out there and mows even though he has a really bad knee. And then he suffers for a few days because of it. So um, i just like to pray for healing for Doug. Okay, let's go into the throne room together. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your blood that was spilt, that you, uh, by your sacrifice, the curtain was torn in the Holy of Holies, giving us direct access into that throne room. So we thank you that you are sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Lord God, uh, we bring uh, Mikey to you, Lord. We ask for continued healing in his body and his mind, that this surgery would just um, allow his brain to get more oxygen, therefore becoming a better learner. Just help him, Lord Jesus, with a good night's sleep and um, just to be, grow healthier and strong. Lord, I just see Bob and, and Jen's uh, prayer coming together, Lord God. This, um, for all of us with aging parents, um, for my own family dealing with me, what I'm going through, Lord, but with um, Jen's family and the, the mother-in-law that seems to be going to meet you soon, Lord. We pray for your grace and mercy in these homes, Lord. Help Bob, Lord, with, and his family and all the years they've poured out in service to their mom. Just give them grace and comfort in this time. Whatever it looks like, whatever demands are on them, give, give them the strength to do what you've called them to do. And for Jen's family, Lord God, just uh, work through all the details of transferring the medical records from uh, Texas to Florida for um, giving each person involved the wisdom to know which steps to take. And most of all, that your comfort would be on all of them, that they would have a divine encounter with your glory, Lord Jesus. And comfort, Lord. Your Holy Spirit, you sent as our comforter, and we're so grateful for the comforter in our life. For Anne, Lord God, thank you that you brought her here today, that she was able to withstand the strategies of enemy to keep us out of fellowship. 
and that she came with a word. And thank you that uh, you are all the armor that we need against the enemy and his plans, Lord. And we ask for mercy on Donna's dog, Lord God. It's so hard. These animals are like family members, and it's just as hard to lose them, to deal with them, as with the people in our lives. We ask for your grace on this dog and that you'd heal it, Lord God. And for Doug, Lord God, I just ask that you pour amazing grace out on him and strength. You know how much pain he endures and how hard this whole journey has been for him. Lord, he's had his own crises in his life to deal with, and now he's got another one. And I just ask for your strength to pour out on him, that your peace, Lord God, and your comfort, and you just open the storehouses of heaven and download healing virtue on Doug. You would help his body start to get stronger. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this uh, service today that we're able to come before you with expectant hearts, knowing that you desire to touch us and speak to us today through worship, through the message, through fellowship, and even later through the singing if we, we get to go to that. And I thank you for that greater work that you're doing on the river, yes. that you want to unite the body of Christ in love and in singing and worshiping you. So thank you, God. Thank you again for this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have uh, something I'd like to say, you know, before we continue. Uh, in Psalms uh, 34, uh, verse 4, it says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. We need not to fear anything. He's our deliverer. He's our comforter. And he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And when you have him in your life, you need not to fear. Hallelujah. Whatever's going on, <clears throat> we came and we prayed. Believe. Don't walk in fear. Believe. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. And on that, why don't we all stand and we'll sing this song, You Are Worthy of My Praise. If you know the echo part that goes in this, usually the men sing and then the ladies will echo. If you know it, great, but if you don't, that's okay. <laughs> we'll all sing it together. Here we go.
verse again. I will bow down, hail you as king.
Well, right now I have a testimony oh. that God has really put on my heart that I wanted to share. Um, I am really blessed that I got connected with a ministry called Red Seal Ministry. And on Thursdays they have a healing talk um, at noon on Facebook. But um, this happened last night. They have their church service on Saturday nights. And Friday afternoon, I started having back spasms that wouldn't stop, like, for 24 hours. And it was so much pain. I couldn't get in any position that wasn't painful. And I prayed. I, you know, I sought the Lord and sent, right before their service started, I sent the lady a, a message and said, I need help. Would you please pray for me? And they had a beautiful worship service online. And right at the end of the worship service, uh, she prayed for me, and all the symptoms left right then. So I just really want to encourage you that when you need prayer, reach out for prayer. If someone needs prayer, re reach out. Don't be afraid to lay hands on people and pray for them, because it's only through prayer that things are going to happen. And a lot of our encounters with people are a one-time encounter. So... Uh, I just am excited that God can use the airwaves to heal people. So you people at home, <laughs> if you have prayer needs, let us know. Even during the service, send a message because someone's always in tune. And we can pray for you as well. Richard, you said you wanted to read a verse. Do you have time before you go? Uh, I was looking for a King James Version. I, you know, that's what I read. Uh, yeah. But uh, Isaiah 44, verse 6. Yeah, 44, Isaiah 44, verse 6. Verse 6. Okay. If, if you want to read it, that would be nice. You put me under pressure. Because that's who we serve. You know? Right. All right, Isaiah 44, 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. There is no God besides me. Amen. Thanks for sharing that, Richard.
Well, welcome to everybody, and I'm glad you made it today. Um, we're going to be finishing up our series, Paid in Full, this morning, uh, which we began way back uh, a few weeks ago on Easter Sunday. And we started the series with a return visit to the empty tomb. And it was there that we learned that this ancient tomb still echoes with victory, faith, and hope. Two weeks ago, we talked about the freedom we have because of Jesus' victory over sin and, and death on the cross. Jesus satisfied a debt that none of us could pay, and he reconciled us to God. And he did this willingly, not because of anything we did for him, but because of God's great love for the world. The reality is, this reality is called grace. And it's the gift of grace that we talked about last week, which leads us to our final look in this uh, series. Today we're going to look at the abundant life. And this is the kind of life that God has for us in and through him and his son. And much of the New Testament gospels give us glimpses into this abundant life. But one section in particular comes to mind, and that's John 10, verses 7 through 10. And it's here that Jesus presents a vivid contrast between the abundant life that he offers and the destructive path that exists for those who are apart from him. The road to abundant life runs through Jesus and is only available through him. For us to have this abundant life, we have to turn away from any other path to life no matter how wide or inviting that it looks, and accept the narrow road to life in Jesus. Today, as we look once again to the beautiful and wonderful gifts of Easter Sunday, we turn to John to help us more fully understand the heart of God for each and every one of us. We're going to begin our look at this abundant life this morning that God has offered us through Jesus by looking at the shepherd, the shepherd and the door. So we're going to look at verses uh, 7 through the first part of verse 9. So Jesus said again, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep, and all others who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. In this passage, Jesus identifies himself as the door uh, of the sheep pen. He is the le legitimate entrance into God's kingdom providing safety and security for his flock. Now, as we think about this, I want to share three functions of a door that gives us a better insight into the kind of life available to us through Jesus. See, there are three functions of a door, and the first is for protection or safety. At night, when we go to bed, I want to make sure that my door is locked. We live in a, in a very safe place, in a... In a uh, area, well, it's not a retirement thing, but it's, it's a senior mobile home park. Uh, seniors just makes us sound younger than, because I think senior in high school, so I call it a senior. <laughs> but I want to make sure my uh, door is locked. And as a matter of fact, Vicki and I will make uh, it a point of going by the, that, the door separately to check it on our way to bed. See, that locked door gives me a feeling of protection and safety, and, but a false one. Because anyone who really wanted to come and do me harm wouldn't let a little lock deter them. As my dad always told me, a, a lock is only there to keep an honest man honest. In the first century world of Jesus and those who listened to him, common sheep pens were not some elaborate structure. They were not what we look at as a fence today made of wood or, or wire stretched between fence posts. Usually they were just simple enclosures with an opening on one side not an actual door. And once all the sheep were safely in the pen at night, it was customary for the shepherd to build a fire at the entrance and sleep there through the night. The shepherd literally became the door, keeping any would-be predators outside. Jesus said thieves and robbers will try to climb in some other way, but they won't get through the door. Inside there is safety and rest because the door offers protection. The second function of a door is as an entrance or opportunity. The sheep not only go in to find safety, but they also go out to find pasture. As we are going to see in a few minutes, Jesus said, I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Each morning, the shepherd led the sheep out through the gate 
so that they could find life-sustaining pasture and water for the day. So the gate was an opportunity to come in to find safety, but also to go out and find nourishment. We still use the image of a door opening to speak of exciting new opportunities. How often have you, have you heard the saying, when one door closes, another one opens? Believers, as believers, we often say that when we are seeking what God wants us to do in a situation, that God will open doors for us so that we might walk through and the open doors let us know his will. Jesus is both the door of security and the door of abundant life. The third function of a door is more symbolic. It's the sign of home or belonging. See, I'm a big Beatles fan. I love most of their music. And one of the most beautiful and inspiring songs of theirs is called The Long and Winding Road. Some of the lyrics go like this. The long and winding road that leads to your door will never disappear. I've seen that road before. It always leads me here, leads me to your door. See, the entire Bible is one long story of going away and coming back again, leaving and coming, coming home. The prodigal son is just one example. The nation of Israel falling away uh, from following God and then returning him to him is another. Our lives are like that too. We leave the garden of childhood innocence to grow up and follow the road of, of life wherever it takes us. But in the end, we find ourselves longing for home again. We give our lives to Jesus and then the temptations of the world sometimes pull us away only to return to Jesus. We are a knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door, as Bob Dylan put it. You know, looking at this now, I, I might have listened to too much of the oldie station this week uh, that seems to be leaking into my message. But because we are so prone to drifting from our relationship, Jesus' statement, I am the door, resonates on a deep level within our, uh, with our need to belong. The need that each of us have as a human being even Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz says there's no place like home. Jesus declares that those who enter through him will be saved. He offers a pathway to eternal life and fellowship with God through Jesus. Believers experience freedom and provision symbolized by going in and out to find pasture. And while Jesus offers abundant life, there exists a stark alternative that is presented by the thief and his agenda. Look at verse 8 and, uh, eight and 10 with me. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. And then moving on to 10, the thief's purpose is to still, steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Here's what we can learn about the thieves and robbers who come to steal sheep away from Jesus. The thieves and robbers in this verse represent false leaders and teachers or those people who try to tempt us away from following Jesus with lies and false promises. Jesus refers to those people as thieves and robbers. And these individuals or temptations represent false leaders or influences that seek to mislead us, deceive us, or harm us. The followers of Jesus that's us. Those thieves th are, are, are looking to draw us away. Think about who or what in your life is trying to draw your attention away from following Jesus. These temptations can be as benign as a friend who asks you to go fishing on a Sunday morning or a person who works at trying to convince you that all roads lead to God and that Jesus is only one of many or that you're a bigot if you're not accepting of every belief and lifestyle. Jesus says that their intentions are to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus shows the difference between himself and the thieves and robbers by highlighting their destructive purposes and comparing them to his intentions for us. See, they aim to steal the sheep, leading them astray from the safety and care provided by the Good Shepherd. Their ultimate goal is to bring harm and destruction to the sheep. But these are not the goals of Jesus. He promises abundant life to everyone who follows him. He promises safe pasture and his peaceful presence. 
We're going to move on and look at our final point this morning. The promise of abundant life. Abundant life is not just existing, but it's a quality of life only found in Jesus. It includes spiritual richness, purpose, and satisfaction beyond worldly measure. This essence of the abundant life, does that mean that we will live life free from trouble, pain, and suffering? Nope. To the contrary, what it means is that in spite of all those things, we will be able to experience a peace that surpasses our human understanding. Look at verse 10 with, again with me. The thief's purpose to, is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. See, the Bible is full of people who faced hardship and difficulty in life. Here's a few examples. Joseph experienced betrayal, slavery, and, and imprisonment before becoming second in command to Pharaoh. Moses was a fugitive in the wilderness before God called him to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. David spent many years running from King Saul before he became Israel's most famous king in the Old Testament. Esther was an exiled Jew until God raised her to the position of Queen of Persia and used her to save his people. Daniel was a captive in Babylon, but was promoted to the highest level of government by the king. Jesus' disciples suffered persecution, but God used them to spread Christianity throughout the entire Roman world. Mary and Martha mourned the loss of their brother before seeing Jesus raise him to life. Adversity can be one of God's greatest blessings if we respond the way that Paul did. Because he'd been trusted with great insight from the Lord, he also was given a painful thorn in the flesh to keep him from becoming prideful. Paul begged the Lord three times to remove it, but was told in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And then Paul's response was, so now I am glad to boast again, boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. See, there are two ways that people can respond to hard times in their lives. And one of the ways people choose to, to walk uh, do is to walk away from God. If he doesn't meet their expectations, they become disappointed and, and they might doubt the reality of God. And since the Lord let ad, uh, adversity happen, they question whether or not uh, he is who the Bible says he is. Or they could blame him because God didn't prevent the situation they decide it's his fault, or they turn their back on God permanently. Some people cannot accept a hardship or loss in their lives and become so angry with God that they never return to him. Or they may reject the Bible. And when people's partial knowledge of scriptures and God's ways lead to unmet expectations, they may close their Bibles thinking that he doesn't keep his promises. The problem is not God's faithfulness, but their interpretation of his promises in accordance with their own plans. Sometimes they nurture their hurt and anger. And the result of this response is deeper hurt and more intense anger than that leads to bitterness. And that bitterness poisons every area of life and brings it with it unhappiness both to the bitter person and to those close to them. Others might waste their lives when people walk away from God and his word, they give up all the good plans that he had for them. The adversity that he designed to draw them closer to himself has been wasted and so have their lives. But on the opposite side, when faced with adversity and hard times, some choose to make the decision to walk into a deeper relationship with Jesus. And instead of turning away from him, the better option is to draw close to him during those times. When, when we do this, we begin to grow some strong qualities like unshakable faith. And in the midst of our pain, God proves himself trustworthy, not to do what we want, but to keep his promises and stay with us through the suffering. We also, we also develop unceasing patience. And when we understand that God is with us, and he has a purpose for our, our storms. 
He gives us the patience to wait for his perfect timing. And we can trust him because he will never extend our suffering beyond what is necessary. And he will see us through to the very end. How about unwavering courage? God told Joshua to be strong and courageous because he would be with him wherever he went. And that same promise is ours today. Each time we trust Jesus in a time of adversity, we gain courage to endure and to face the next challenge with confident faith. We also get increasing purity. Adversity prompts us to examine our lives. As we turn to God in the midst of pain and difficulties, he reveals sin and wrong thinking in our lives so that we can repent. Be cleansed and live a holy life. And this is one of the ways that, that he grows us to, to the likeness of his son. He changes our hearts until we don't want anything in our lives that doesn't fit our holy identity as his children. The Bible calls us saints, which is how we should see ourselves. That doesn't mean that we're sinless, but hard times moves us towards being fully committed to Jesus with no desire to sin against him. It also develops love for God's word. See, our first response to the storms of life should be to open the scriptures, asking the Lord what he wants to say to us. See, the Bible is our most precious possession because it is God's voice speaking to us in written language, giving us encouragement, direction, and comfort, and correction. When we approach life with a surrendered will, we resolve to follow Jesus, and with a firm faith in his word, we'll accept God's dealings with us, even if they include pain and hardship. We can do this because we know that his goal is to make us holy and useful for his purposes. And when we have this attitude towards adversity, our witness for Jesus begins to attract other people to him. We may not have a choice about hard times in our lives, but when it comes, we have to decide how we are going to respond. We can either yield to it, knowing that God has something good in mind, or we can turn away from him, live in rebellion and waste our lives. Jesus is the source of life, the abundant life. The echo of the empty tomb reverberates with love, freedom, grace, and the abundant life. That was what our series, Paid in Full, was all about. See, God's great love for us and the gifts of Easter morning. And this morning, Lenny led us in a song called In Christ Alone. And at the end of our message last week, I had shared the lyrics to that worship song and asked Faye and Randy to let us sing it. And Lenny had no idea. But I think it's worth sharing a few of those verses with us here again uh, this morning. So it, I am, it was like, it was a God thing for, for Lenny to choose that one. And this could almost be the theme song for this series, if sermon series had a theme song. Uh, but anyway, in Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled and when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. See, Jesus came to give abundant life to humanity. He came to give life in all of its fullness. He came to give us a rich and satisfying life. And through his sacrificial death and his resurrection, he provides access to that abundant life for each one of us who believe in him. Abundant life is found in a close relationship with Jesus, the good shepherd. He is the door through which the pastors of peace and presence can be accessed. There is no other way no matter what the false teachers and tempters say, Jesus alone is the path through which abundant life can be found. As we reflect on our verses today and bring our series to a close, I want to revisit where we've been together. From Easter Sunday, the empty tomb, and the echoes of victory, faith, and hope. From debt to freedom to the gift 
of life, a, a gift of grace. And all of this leads us all the way back to Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Matthew 7, 13, Jesus says to his followers, Enter through the narrow gate. The road that leads to hell is a very easy road, and the gate to hell is very wide. Many people enter through that gate. The road to abundant life runs through Jesus. In him we find salvation, security, and satisfaction that so far surpasses anything the world has to offer. That is anything that he has to offer both individually and to our church. We listen to his voice, we follow his lead, and we experience the fullness of life that comes from living in his presence. If you've never experienced this abundant life in Jesus, I want to invite you to give your life to him today and receive his grace and be free from the unbearable weight of sin and death. To find freedom that can only be found in the sacrifice of Jesus for each and every one of us. If you want to take that step this morning, you want that grace and abundant life, I want to invite you to do one of a couple things this morning. First, we're going to have a final song in, in just a few minutes. And if you're ready to make that decision during that song, I want you to come up and talk to me. I'll be up here in the front. I'll be standing here um, right in front of the piano. And you can share what God has put on your heart with me, and we can pray together. And I can share with you what you need to do to grow in this new relationship that you've started with Jesus. But if your legs just won't work just thinking about walking up front, then you can come and grab me after the service and we can talk or write it down on that card that we talked about earlier and put it in the offering basket as it goes around in a few minutes or email me or text me or whatever you need to do, do it. And if you do use the cards, let me know of, to let me know of a decision that you're making or a prayer request, please put your name on the card uh, and the contact information so that I can follow up with you. Uh, we've, we've had some cards without names or, or contact information. I still pray over them, um, but I would like to be able to pray uh, very specifically for you. But if you've already put your faith and trust in Jesus, but God is leading you to make a decision of some sort, all those ways we just talked about, you can use them too. To our online congregation, please let us know any decisions you're making or prayer requests that you might have as well. But whatever God has put on your heart this morning, respond as he leads. May God have his way in each of our hearts this morning. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for scriptures that you have given us, Lord, so that we can learn more about your heart. We can learn more about what Jesus has done for us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our debt being paid in full. We thank you for the abundant life. We thank you for the grace that you, we've been given. We thank you for the freedom from the depth of, depth of our, our sin. And we thank you for the, the echo from that empty tomb that calls to us. Lord, I pray that if there are decisions that need to be made this morning, Lord, that we uh, that have the courage to make those decisions. So Lord, we leave it in your hands. May your will be done in the rest of this service. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Our final song is one that's a very special one to me because I've actually been sharing this song uh, for over 30 years now as a part of the chapel service at the Redwood Gospel Mission. And this is a song that's become the theme song of my doing the chapels there. And uh, it just uh, really speaks of the first awakening to our eyes that we see the Lord for the first time. But it's something that's ongoing. It's kind of like an ongoing honeymoon when we realize how real God is and his heart towards us. And the song is, Oh Happy Day. And I really uh, first heard it in the 70s. 
and still sing it today regularly. And I just want us all to just sing it together as if we were just entering in for the first time and trusting that God is opening many eyes right now to the reality of who God is and how much he loves us. And uh, so let's sing it together. Oh, happy day. sounded like a choir out there. So I, I think that um, you're, you're taking sign-ups to go with you, right, to the gospel mission next time. They're going to play that. And so he's going to be hitting you guys up. Um, today, uh, for our offering, uh, let me pray over our offering this morning, and then uh, I'll ask Frank um, if you'll come and, and take up our offering. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have brought us here. We thank you so much for your love for us. We just feel overwhelmed by the fact that you loved me, that, that you sent your son from the, the, the side of your throne to, to live as one of us, as an example to us, to die for us, and then be raised again. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us that much. We are not worthy of that, but that's grace, isn't it? So, Lord, we thank you for your grace this morning. And, Lord, as we take up this offering... Lord, and these, these tithes, we ask that be used to glorify you. In, in any way, Lord, we pray that every penny is used in a way that is going to glorify you, that is going to bring uh, Jesus to the forefront of uh, everything that we do, that this town uh, can hear the word of Jesus, hear the word Jesus, and know that it is something good and wonderful, not a curse word. So, Lord, we pray for this offering to accomplish that this morning.
And we pray this in your name. Amen. afraid that when I sat down over there I was going to play the, the bongos. Um, I promise I will never do that. Uh, uh, but uh, thank you guys for all being uh, here today and I hope to see you guys uh, at three o'clock at uh, Casadero Baptist Camp. So, uh, our benediction today comes from Colossians 3 uh, verses 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. <laughs>